So today I'm going to do a little update on the FerroCell project that I'm working on with AB Science. Now, uh, this uh, all happened around four months ago, or it all started around four months ago when AB Science made a video uh, called What Does the FerroCell Really Show? or What the FerroCell um, Shows? And, um, and in this video, he did a little simulation using, um, using uh, Blender to show uh, to demonstrate that what the ferro cell is likely showing, the lines that we see in the ferro cell are created um, using um, specular reflection off the nanoparticles in the thin layer of uh, fluid between the ferro cell, which contains ferro fluid. And so um, this project has advanced quite a bit since this simple simulation using Blender, I was able to replicate his simulation quite easily using, um, using um, the exact same method that he described to me after I got in contact him, with him after seeing this video. Since that time, AB has uh, developed a more, um, I'm going to say a more scientific approach to the simulation of the light lines that you see in the ferro cell. And uh, so today what I'm going, to, I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some of the results. I'm not going to get into the details because um, we are still working on the paper and I am still working on uh, the fine details now, the software, because I think the results we have right now are quite good. But um, I just want to make sure that I'm simulating my experiment as accurately as possible uh, just to make sure that we're getting um, the best results that we can out of the software. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, just the one, the single light. Okay, so here is a simulation I did. So here is a, a magnet under a ferrocell. This ferrocell is um, five centimeters in diameter, and the magnet is one centimeter in diameter and one centimeter tall. And the simulation, basically, I'm plugging in um, the same parameters, and these are the results we're getting. So uh, I just want to make it clear that this simulation is not simulating um, the glass. It's not simulating the you know refract uh, ref uh, sorry the refraction and diffraction and diffusion and whatever else you, that might be going on here in the glass. It is not simulating that. It is only simulating the specular reflection off the nanoparticles and it is displaying the line that you see here. So this is the line that we're trying to simulate in this particular experiment. So this I took a red laser and I placed the ferro cell on, uh, on the magnet and I put a red laser over here pointing in towards the center of the glass and towards the center of the magnet. And uh, these are the results we get from the simulation. And so um, I think this is a really good match, but to verify this, um, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you uh, them overlaid on each other. And so when I slowly transition from the actual experiment to the simulation, you can see that the light lines at this particular line that we're trying to simulate, which is this line here, is very accurately uh, modeled. And so um, what I said before in my community section, I said, if one line works, then all the lines work. And so, um, you know, so I am very confident that the simulation is is working um, very accurately. And again, we're not simulating any other effects that you're seeing here in, in, in the glass, the two pieces of glass that the ferrofluid is sandwiched in between. We are not simulating that at this point. Um, my goal, my concern, my interest in this subject was, um, was trying to simulate these lines. I wanted to know what was causing these lines why are they curving like this? Why do they look the way that they do? And so um, I, I believe that we're getting very good results with um, this particular simulation, um, extremely accurate. It's extremely accurate in my opinion. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly take you through a few more examples, a few more simulations that I did to try and model different configurations of magnets. And so as you see here, this is the Polar, um, this is a polar view of the magnet, 
and you and the um, sequence of lights it, there are 36 lights uh, in the simulation there are 36 lights in the actual ferro cell and so uh, as you can see if you look very closely you will see that um, that this is a very accurate depiction of the um, the curved lines that you see in the ferro cell uh, so there is no doubt that in my mind that specular reflection uh, can account for you know, I'm going to say 90%, 95%, a large percent of the effects that you're seeing in the ferro cell in terms of the um, curvatures of these lines, not taking into account the refraction through the glass that is obviously going to be happening to maybe slightly distort these lines into slightly different curves. But um, for the most part, um, the simulation itself is is creating the hypertrochoid image that were that is has become popularized by um, by the independent researchers like Tim Banderelli and Ken Wheeler and others. Um, this fascinating um, hypertrochoid uh, pattern is um, is what we are seeing here in the simulation, uh, and this is only specular reflection. This is not uh, simulating any other effects. So this is you know, I'm going to say 90, 95, maybe even 99% accurate. Uh, and this is what I was looking for. This is the solution I was looking for. Why do the lines look like this? And so uh, here is another example. This is just with nine lights instead of uh, 36 lights. So it's kind of, it's a little bit easier maybe to see how accurate this simulation is working. Uh, here is a uh, an example where I shifted the magnet uh, over to the right and you can see the simulation is uh, very accurately depicting the light lines, the path of these lines that, that gets reflected to our eyes. So keep in mind that this is light coming from the side, reflecting off the particles in the ferrofluid and it's reflecting to your eyes. And so you can see that it is very accurately mimicking, uh, all the, albeit, you know, the simulation is, is much more perfect than, you know, than the actual situation. You can see that the, uh, the way the lines curve is very nicely and accurately matched to the actual ferrocell image. Okay, and then there's the one I showed before um, where, you know, we've got the 36 lights and this is the polar view and you can see that the simulation is very accurate. Okay, and now here is the side view. This is actually two magnets um, together and I simulated that here and you can see that, uh, you know, especially when you look at you know, the direction of these lines, you can see that it is a very, especially in this region here, in this region here, it is a, an extremely accurate um, depiction of what is going on in the ferro cell. Um, here is another simulation. Now this is the same, same two magnets, only they're side by side this way. And one of the magnets, of course, is flipped. And so this is two magnets side by side um, next to each other and, you know, north, south, south, north. So uh, you don't see the magnet here because I had a black piece of cardboard between the magnet and the ferro cell just so you could see because I wanted to focus on this region in here. So you can see this again is a, is a fairly accurate, very accurate depiction of the lines, especially in this region here. So what I did was I zoomed in on uh, the center uh, of here and here, just so you could see, um, you could see how closely the match is in this region here. You can see this red region here has this sort of cross kind of a, an effect, and you can see that here. And you can see these curved lines in here that looks kind of like a flower petal, and you can see that in here as well. And so um, you can see that the simulation is extremely accurate and it's picking up some of even the smaller features that, um, that you can see when you zoom in on, on this particular region. Okay, here is another example where I shifted the magnet over a little bit and you can see that the pattern is, is very similar. The pattern is very similar. And uh, so here's one more I'm going to show you um, with two cylinder magnets next to each other, and here's my simulation. And so um, 
you can see that in various configurations and various situations, magnets in different orientations, uh, we are getting very good results. We are getting extremely good results, in my opinion, of the um, what we see in the ferro cell. So that's all I'm going to do for now. Uh, this hypertrochoid pattern, very beautiful hypertrochoid pattern, has really been the focus of the ferro cell. This has been the, why does it make a hypertrochoid pattern, has been the question that people have been asking. They've been asking me, they've been asking each other, they've been asking Ken Wheeler. And, you know, the only person that was able to answer that for me was this guy, AB Science. So thank you, AB. You solved a problem, you solved it for me, and, um, and I'm very happy at, at how this is turning out. So there's a bit more work to do. I'm still trying to fine tune the um, code so that I can more accurately match the uh, physical experiment that I'm doing in my, in my office here. But for the most part, I am quite happy with these results and uh, I hope you all will be quite happy uh, to see how far we have come since the original um, blender uh, experiment that started it all. So I hope you guys are all uh, having a great day and um, I guess, uh, you know, I will let you know if I make any further and uh, make any more progress on the actual paper. So um, uh, ciao for now.